Yeah. I think you have to really start from a place of just asking some questions, right? Like a lot of times, uh, so I went to a networking event last opportunity to practice this. And so you want to ask questions. So if somebody come, comes on the call and they're like, tell me about you, what do you do? And you're like, well, I'd love to do that. But first, I'm really curious, um, like, how did you find me? Or what caused you to want to have this conversation? Or have you been at this networking event before? Like, take that control back of back of the conversation. Uh, because that allows you to start from a place of listening, even though you're talking first. You're really doing it so that you can first listen. And building your questions and, and not being afraid to ask questions that maybe feel a little disjointed. Um, so, again, this is top of mind. So I'll just give an example from last night. So I, I went to this event, sat down at a table and was asking a woman about her business. And I listened a little bit and she told me what her background was and she used to be a teacher. And, and when I asked that question, she told me what she used to do. And then there was this little indication that perhaps she wasn't actually in love with the thing that she's doing. And she did it because she wanted more freedom and uh, she's she's running like a franchise type business is really what it is right so and there's some connection of the work that she was doing and what she's doing now and so anyways i just my questions kept building and i said well that's really interesting that you're doing something that doesn't really speak to you so let me ask you like how did you get into that other thing that you were doing because there was a little bit of a connection because I was trying to piece together a story and, and gain an understanding of her business. And so thinking about when you're doing that, it's you're not peppering the questions. It's, it's conversational. And in a conversation, you're, they, they say great conversation and great communicators aren't just sitting there waiting to like ask their next question, like knowing what the next question is. It is literally waiting till the person speaks to then formulate the next question. Not going down your list. It's curiosity. It's, it's staying in that curious space. Yeah. yeah. Staying in that curious space. And then, and not being afraid of the pause after they're done speaking so that your brain has a moment to catch up, right? There's, there's, you know, our brains are magical things, but they're not instantaneous things. They're computers, right? Sometimes you think about the circle is spiraling, it's doing the processing. <laughs> yep. so you have to give your moment, your brain a moment to catch up. And you also have to give a moment for them to answer the question. Like sometimes we think that we have to fill the pauses in with words or movement of some sort. But there's a great acronym um, that I suggest you write down and it's WAIT, W-A-I-T. Why am I talking? And think about that for yourself and think about it for the other person. Why am I talking? Mm -hmm. Not from a judgmental place, but just, it's like a reminder so that you can pause. Let those spaces, because sometimes when somebody shares something, it's like good to be like, wow, that's really interesting. And let them take a moment to be like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, that's interesting to think of my journey or the thing that I'm facing and giving that space allow some of that emotional connection to happen between you and that person too. Um, Cause you're not just like your brain and their brain isn't just constantly going. Cause you're like, there's all these words we have to process. It's like give a moment to like allow that heart space to develop and connect. 